welcome back to my channel welcome to today's car boot sale haul video now you are balanced of all things on a, a blue roll you know those blue rolls that you use for clean up so try not to fall off i don't know why i've done this i own a million tripods and yet i've chosen to use the short tripod and balance on a blue roll who knows i have done one car boot sale this morning you cannot see the table very clearly shall i show you a shot of the table don't fall off your blue roll one car boot sale and even that I didn't do the whole of, even that I decided that I had run out of energy and that I'd bought enough stuff. So I missed out quite a bit of it, but I did quite well. I only did Easter Compton today. Last week I didn't go to any because I was coming off a cruise with my mother. The week before that, I think I only went to Trench on the Sunday. So I hadn't been to Easter Compton for a couple of weeks and I had high hopes that there might be some interest in new stock. Still quite a lot of the same stuff coming out from the same sellers, but I did get um, some new bits and there were some amateurs there, which of course is what I like. I like people who are just clearing out the house. That's the kind of stuff I buy. I don't really buy a lot of collectibles, mostly just other people's stuff. So I'll start with this. This is the first thing I bought and, and, and it's, it's one of those things that comes with a bonus level. It is a Nordic Homewares Multi Mini Bunt Pan. It is very heavy. It is anodized anodized iron or something I don't, I don't even know what it's made of it's certainly not aluminium it's heavy um it, it has a bonus level because it comes with all of the previous remnants of bunt cakes left in it somebody did not grease it very well i should imagine they swore a bit when they left all that much bunt cake behind and that's perhaps why they then decided they didn't want to own it anymore i will need to clean this before i can sell it and i don't know what it will go for but it cost me with a jamie oliver flavor shaker a pound Pound for the two items from the house clearance guy. This is something else that needs a really nice clean up because that's also quite cruddy. So those things will go there to be, go downstairs and be scrubbed. <laughs> that Jamie Oliver flavour shaker will make that noise for ages now until the ball sells. We used to joke that I was the Southwest premier distributor of those things because at one point I had about six in stock. But they do sell and I haven't got any at the moment. So a quid for those two items was already a very nice start. I should imagine the bunt pan will be a safe 15-ish and the Jamie Oliver flavour shaker is usually a safe tenner. So that's already a very nice start for my first pound, isn't it? And then from the same guy, I walked across the other side of his stall and he had a load of books and I've got an assortment of books, some for my mother, some for myself, some to sell. So they were 50 pence each. I got my mother a couple of James Herriot's. We've got her... Uh, it shouldn't happen to a vet and the Lord God made them all. These are not the first couple. The first couple were All Creatures Great and Small and All Things White, bright, and, bright and Beautiful or something anyway, weren't they? Somebody's ticked off the ones they've read. So yeah, these are not the first ones, but they are, you can read them as standalone. And I think Mum will enjoy those. So I got her those two. And then I also got her another Derek Longdon. So recently I picked up a load of Derek Longdons and she's read all of them apart from this one, I think. So this is Paws in the Proceedings. And then also the Horses, Heifers and Hairy Pigs, Life of a Yorkshire Vet. I think this is someone she watches on the telly, the Yorkshire Vet. This chap works in the same veterinary practice that was originally made famous by James Herriot when he went to work there. So four books for Mother there for two quid. That'll keep Mother quiet. And then three to sell, Continental Crimes, which I think I've got on my Kindle. Definitely read it. Continental Crimes, which is a British Library Crime Classics, and Blood on Tracks, which I know I've got, which is another British Library Crime Classics. Those ones are compilations of short stories. These British Library Crime... crime cl oh my goodness. The British Library Crime Classics series sell well. And then I got a Lillian Beckwith Beautiful Just... I absolutely have loved these Lillian Beckwith books most of my life. They're, they're just lovely. They are fictional autobiographical is the best way you can describe it. So the writer genuinely did move to the Hebrides, but uh, in, in like the early 50s. She genuinely did move out to the Outer Hebrides and lived on a very small island. But then she began to write fictional tales based on the things she had experienced is the best thing I can say so they're they're kind of somewhere in that blurred area between autobiographical and not quite not quite true and it's very rare that you find the hardbacks very rare indeed this one was published in 1975 this is one of the later ones and then one for me Georgette Heyer Penhallow I'm not sure if I've read this or not I feel like I have feel like I've read it. If it's the one where the murder victim has got quite a nice 
younger brother than I've read it. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I say quite nice. I don't mean like, you know, attractive. I mean, quite a gentle, loving kind of soul who actually turns out to be the murderer in the end. So four quid for the books, a pound for the other stuff from that same guy. And then I paid two pounds for a Thelwell's Riding Academy. This one is The Picnic featuring Penelope and Kipper. I had a load of these at one point. I had about five of them and they all sold for about 25 quid each. So hopefully Penelope and Kipper will follow suit. There we go. That is The Picnic. This is the artist who... Oh, the peak is missing off her riding hat. Oh, my life. I picked it out of the box and looked very careful at it, or thought I had, to make sure it wasn't broken. And the peak is missing from her riding hat. And it does not appear to be in the box anywhere. Well, blow, because these sell very nicely and I was pleased to pick it up. That is a disappointment. I'm not saying it won't sell, but it won't sell for what it would have sold for. Yabu sucks to you, Carla. That's what you get for not looking closely enough. Like I said, I did take it out of the box and check it, but I didn't notice that her hat was broken. There was definitely no peak for anybody's riding hat in this box. Oh, well. If you see them and they're not broken, they're worth picking up. Speaking of breaking, I got these home in one piece. Now, I bought these from a lovely lady. I've met her before at the Dursley car boot sale. You'll have to forgive me for forgetting your name. If it's any consolation, I frequently forget my own. So it's nothing personal. I have forgotten her name, but I know I've met her before. And we joked this morning about how I was supposed to be buying less breakables because of getting a home in one piece. And we joked about whether I would get these home. I have. They have made it home. They are Wittard large cups and saucers, jumbo cups and saucers, in fact. There are three of them, black and white polka dot with the red inner. And I have got them home in one piece and she wanted £3 for them. So pleased with those for £3. You watch me smash them now, that'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? <laughs> Another store had these three pocket edition games, Monopoly, Cluedo and Sorry, and she wanted a pound for the three, so I grabbed those three for a pound, and then she wanted 50p for a set of Doreen Virtue Healing with the Angels Oracle cards. Are they all in there? These things are usually practically unused. number of times you pick these up and they're practically unused. I will need to count them, but it does look like they're all there. There is no, no dip in the box that would imply some are missing. So £1.50 for that little stack of goodness. From Steve today, I spent £6 with Steve and in my £6 I got a pack of disposable bed pads. Don't panic, I'm not yet quite incontinent. Mum is not either, but the dogs, we've got two puppies at the moment, two young dogs. They are both both about the same age, almost seven, eight months. Dar Darcy, you know about, and, T and Teddy, Tammy got a dog and he's called Teddy, and he's about the same age. And so we're still having some accidents in the house, and so we're still putting puppy pads down. And I saw these on Steve's store, and I thought, well, I'm sure they'll work just as well as a puppy pad, won't they? I tend to buy the puppy pads whenever I see them cheaply, you know because we've been getting through a fair amount. How do you get into these things? Is not got a perforation anywhere? Can't see a perforation, I'll just shred my way in. These look quite large, actually, they look... These will be admirable as puppy pads. They will work just as well. Look. They look identical to some of the puppy pads we've had before. They look absolutely no different. If anything, they're lightly scented, which the uh, puppy pads aren't. But hopefully that won't put the dogs off from using them. I don't think it will. So yeah, when I saw those, I thought, well, I'll do. We'll try those. Um, so I, I spent £6 with Steve. I'm not sure if I already said that. I had the bed pads. I had this vintage Tupperware grater. It, it evoked such a strong memory in me. I think we had an orange one. My brain is saying orange or orangey brown in the 70s. And I don't remember the bottom part. I re only remember this top part, but that was, it did, it It sprang such a, such a strong memory in me when I saw it. So it's a vintage Tupperware multi-grater, multi-grater and strainer, I think they call it. So that was in with me six pound from Steve. I definitely run, run out of space and I'll stop putting stuff back on the table. And then three of the smaller Wittard espresso cups. In the unit, I've got a box that has spares for making up sets and i know i've got some spare sauces in there and possibly a couple of other mugs so i'll see if i've got some to make up enough enough to make up a set now and then also in that money a santoro gorgeous purse this one is uh, the mermaid i don't know if it's gorgeous it's definitely santoro but i don't know if it's still classed as gorgeous or whether gorgeous is just a little dark haired girl not sure 
lovely condition though no marks no stains that was in there as well and a ladybird the story of cricket mug on a fine summer day many people spend hours watching cricket matches the women and girls wear pretty summer dresses and the men and boys take off their jackets the spectators often eat ice cream or drink orange aid as they watch from the story of cricket by ladybird books limited huge mug that really big and then a Roald Dahl audiobook selection, which both Steve and I said we weren't sure whether it would be full. It was open, which is no, never a good sign. 27 CDs. Let's have a count. Count with me. Two, three, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-one, nineteen, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. So there's two discs missing out of that. But I have got in that box of tricks that I mentioned earlier on in the unit, a box of spares. I've got another one that's got some missing. So surely, surely I will be able to make it up to a full set. Surely. Watch this space. I bet I can't. <laughs> so that was £6 for all of that. I paid 20p for this Jeff Banks Ports of Call mug. Hand painted. Really nice colours, I thought. I, won't, I, I don't need it myself, obviously. Not a mug household. Well, the others are, I don't. One pound for a vintage Filofax Mini Cross. It would have been a very beautiful pickup if it hadn't been for the fact that it has some, I don't know if I can catch it on the camera, there's some creasing to the leather here, but it does have the pen with it and the pen alone is a safe tenor. So I think that's, a, I don't think that's a, there's no loss in this pickup, certainly not a pound, but it, wouldn't be, it would have been a much nicer pickup without the leather creasing. I don't know if I really don't think you can pick it up properly, but it's creased on both sides around the spine. Somebody's obviously opened it and done that with it. Never do that. I paid a pound for a box of sliding key fobs, which are for work. And yes, I could probably get the pound back out of petty cash, but I probably won't bother because at the end of the day, it's only a quid. These are very useful. We have a lot of keys at work, and I am a big believer in all the keys being labelled so people know what they're doing. Other people at work seem to think it's okay to just guess which key is which, but I would rather know what I'm doing. £2 for a Wild and Wolf repro phone. It's one of those push buttons that's made to, meant to look like an original dial phone. Two quid for that one. Pound for a Sesame Street Cookie Monster. It says C is for cooking. It's a utensils jar. Even though it's Cookie Monster and you would think that would be a cookies jar. That is Cookie Monster, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, C is for cooking, so it's for keeping your utensils in. Pound for that one. Have you noticed that I have not had to take my glasses off to read anything? I picked up my new glasses this morning. Finally, we're given another go at varifocals. I seem to be getting on okay with them so far. I had a long chat with the optician about why they didn't work before because I've been back and forth from the eye hospital in between all of this. But finally, I've picked up my new glasses and I'm able to look down at things and see them, which is pretty much a major breakthrough at this point. <laughs> Two pound each for these shoes, a beautiful pair of Poetic Licence. Poetic Licence are a sister company of a regular choice and these have had very little wear because as you can see the painted soles are still intact. There's no scuffs on the little heels there. They are lovely. They are a US 8, which I believe is a UK 6. And from the same seller, two pounds for both, two pounds each, four pounds for the two, a pair of Joe Brown's Cherries shoes. So they're a sky blue with a cherry motif and cherry lining and then the last item from today's haul i actually paid the price marked i didn't bother trying to haggle it is as you can see an emma bridgewater double duvet set five pound with two pillowcases i hope the pillowcase yeah they are the originals i realize when it says plus two pillowcases it could have been anything so i think the design is called chatty penguins yeah i'm pretty sure that's chatty penguins there we go and an Emma Bridgewater double duvet set for a fiver is always a nice buy. Always a bargain. That's it. Dogs are on their way in. That is the haul and all of the haul. And as I always say at this point, if there's anything that floats your boat, my email address is in the description box below. You can drop me a line and I will sort you out. And um, and that, that's it. That's all I've got to say. Thank you for joining me for this one. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.